So, welcome again uh, in my course power electronics application in power system. So, in the last lecture, I discuss uh, different types of transmission line models uh, and in particular for this course, we will uh, understand in detail uh, this long line model, long transmission line model. Also I discuss uh, the differences among these uh, different types of transmission line models wherever they are applicable and uh, I, I also uh, explain the mathematical uh, models of power long tra power transmission line. All right. So, today we will we'll proceed further on this and we will understand uh, this in more detailed way. So, in today's lecture also we will discuss long power transmission model. So, in, in my last lecture, we derived the expression of uh, this voltage and current for a long transmission line at any point of the line uh, which is x uh, uh, kilometer or x meter distant away from the receiving end. So, let me again recapitulate uh, uh, what we, we, we develop in the last lecture, so that we can proceed further in a more detailed way. Okay. So, in my last lecture we considered that we have a long transmission line this is suppose representation of a long transmission line and uh, we consider that the voltage one side of the line is V s. S here here S stands for that uh, here S stands for the sending end side and the current in that side is representing I S. Okay. Similarly, the other side of the line the voltage represents V R and the current represents I R. Right. So, what we did in the last lecture is that suppose and also we assume that this line is of L meter or L kilometer length or line length is L meter or L kilometer. So, what we did in the last lecture is that from the receiving end side suppose from the receiving end side there is a x distance and there is a point at the x distance at this particular point. So, this point is located x distance away from the receiving end side. So, at this point suppose the voltage is V x and the current at this point is I x. So, we de develop the expression of V x and I x in the last lecture. If I write this expression for V x and I x this is something like that V x is equal to cosine V r cosine hyperbolic gamma x plus I r z c sin hyperbolic gamma x, where, where this gamma is basically equal to root over y z, where y is representing admittance of the line, admittance of the line and z is representing small z is representing small z is representing the line series impedance, line series impedance this both the uh, this admittance and impedance are considered to be per unit length and this is what the difference of this long line model to other types of transmission line models. Here we consider 
this line parameters to be distributed in nature. Line impedance is distributed over the line and line admittance also is distributed over the line. Right? Similarly, we develop the expression of I x as well. So, this I x is equal to V r divided by Z c sin hyperbolic gamma x plus I r cos hyperbolic gamma x. This is these are the two expressions we developed in my last lecture. Here Z c is basically representing root over small z by y. Okay. So, here small z is again line series impedance per length, small y is representing line admittance uh, per unit length. Okay. So, these are uh, the uh, expressions we developed in the last lecture and we will work on this, we will try to understand these two equations in more detail, we will do some sort of case studies and we will uh, interpret this equation in different way right in this lecture. So, what we will do in first that uh, uh, as you know that uh, yeah. So, this V x is basically V x is basically representing the voltage at the point x distant away from the uh, receiving end. So, this is equal to voltage at a distance x from the receiving end receiving end and just writing this receiving in short okay similarly i x is basically we represent i of x is the current at a distance x from the receiving end. So, this is what we develop. Okay. So, we can write this uh, V x and I x in terms of this V r and I r in mathematically in a matrix form and let us write this. So, this V x and I x is equal to cosine hyperbolic gamma x z c sin hyperbolic gamma x sin hyperbolic gamma x divided by z c and cosine hyperbolic gamma x. So, these are the matrix element and in this side there will be V r and I r. So, you can represent basically this equation in a matrix form. So, this is the representation of the equation in matrix form. This is representation in matrix form. Now, uh, if you look at this x, so when x is equal to 0, so we have two boundary conditions. when x is equal to 0, then V of x will be equal to V r and I x, I of x will be equal to I r. Right? Similarly, when x is equal to L, if we consider x is equal to L, then V of x will be equal to V of s and I of x will be equal to i of s. 
So, if we consider this, this boundary condition, if we apply in this matrix form, so what we will get, we will get a relationship of sending n parameter to receiving n parameter. So, let us write this. So, we can write this is V s I s is equal to cosine hyperbolic gamma l z c sin hyperbolic gamma l sin hyperbolic gamma l divided by z c divided by uh, not divided by the other element will be cos hyperbolic gamma l. So, this will relate with the column matrix V r I r. Now, if you look at this expression, if you look at this expression, then this whole expression gives a relationship this yields relationship of ship of sending end and receiving end parameters. This is an important relationship. So, this this we uh, derive from the from this particular conditions and we give we get a uh, uh, we get a uh, relationship between the sending end and receiving uh, receiving end parameters. So, this side is representation this this V s I s is a column matrix which it, it represents sending end parameters. Whereas this V R I R, uh, this is a column matrix which represents receiving n parameters. Okay, so we get a relationship between these two. Now, what we will do this relationship, or what uh, we will uh, analyze this relationship? I will come to that. Okay, so also we will get many other things from this relationship. We will derive many other important relationship from this particular equations these things also we will discuss in today's lecture. So, one thing that we can you can see is uh, this uh, one side of this uh, you know mat, uh, this matrix is sending and uh, parameter another side of the matrix is receiving and parameters and this matrix this matrix is basically relating this sending and parameters to receiving and parameters. When we have such a kind of uh, relationship of sending n parameter and receiving n parameters, then that particular matrix, this particular matrix basically represent uh, this transmission line parameters model. Okay. So, uh, this is taught in uh, electrical circuit theory course. So, if we consider that there is a relationship of V s I s to some V r I r, then the matrix element that is named as A B C D, this A B C, C D represents A B C D represents a two port network parameters which is called as transmission. line parameters parameter model okay where as we can see is a is basically equal to cosine hyperbolic we have cosine hyperbolic gamma l b is representing 
जेट सी साइन हाइपरबोलिक गामायल सी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग साइन हाइपरबोलिक गामा एल डिवाइडेड बाय जेट सी एंड डी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग एगेन कोसाइन हाइपरबोलिक गामा एल सो फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन हैव एन इम्पोर्टेंट रिलेशनशिप दैट ए इज इक्वल टू डी पैरामीटर ए इज इक्वल टू पैरामीटर डी एनदर रिलेशनशिप इज ए डी माइनस बी सी इज इक्वल टू वन सो वेन दिस रिलेशनशिप होल्ड ए इज इक्वल टू डी वी कॉल इट इज ऑल्सो ए प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए टू पॉट नेटवर्क वी कॉल्ड देयर इज ए सीमेट्री इन द लाइन वेन दिस इक्वेशन होल्ड देन वी कॉल देयर इज ए रेसिप्रोसिटी रेसिप्रो सिटी इन द नेटवर्क ओके सो दिस दिस विल होल्ड दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट रिलेशनशिप सो ए ट्रांसमिशन लाइन दैट वी कंसिडर ए लॉन्ग ट्रांसमिशन लाइन दैट वी कंसिडर हियर कैन बी सीन एज ए सीमेट्रिकल एज वेल एज रेसिप्रोकल विच मीन्स दैट it it holds both the properties of symmetricity uh, both the properties of symmetry and reciprocity of a two pod network okay now we will consider a special case which is con which is called as lossless transmission line so in this course uh, or even any course of electrical power system usually uh, we, we model a power transmission line to be lossless which means that we ignore this power loss happening in a particular power trans long power transmission line and this assumption holds to be uh, true to some extent because in power transmission line the the uh, the losses with respect to the power transmission uh, capacity is very very less so many a times for simplicity for ease of this uh, modeling we ignore this uh, loss so when we ignore this loss if we go back and see what do we mean by loss here you can see this gamma and jc these are the two important parameters one uh, both are basically function of z and y now what is z z is basically line series impedance per length what is what is y y is line admittance per unit length now when we consider that line to be lossless what will actually happen to this gamma and jc so let us see so if we consider that jc which is a ratio of root over z by this will be small z of course small z small z by y where we know that small z is the series small z is the series impedance so we can represent it as r plus j x where r is equal to line resistance and x is equal to line inductive reactance similarly this y we can consider to be j plus gb where g is representing this line to earth conductance 
and B is line susceptance. Okay. So, when we consider that lossless line, it means that we are ignoring this R and G, we consider that both are 0, this assumption hold when we consider for lossless transmission line. Uh, physically what this R is basically representing, R representing this line resistance. In practical uh, long transmission line, if you take the ratio of this line resistance to line reactance, then you will see that it is basic, uh, it is very low. Okay. So, line resistance is very, very less as compared to line reactance. This holds to be true for any long power transmission line, R is lower than x. Similarly, G, what do you mean by line uh, to earth conductance? So, this G is basically uh, representing line to earth conductance and this happens whenever we, we consider some conductivity of the line insulators. So, uh, usually if the line insulators having some conductivity, then G would have some finite value, but usually this value of G is very, very low and we can ignore it, uh, considering that there is no leakage uh, in the insulator. So, we can safely take the assumption G is equal to 0, but this is happening for, uh, this is this is what we are taking for simplicity. So, when we consider so, then you can see from this expression that this Z will be like J x and J this susceptance will be j b. Now, this j x is basically representing the line reactance. So, this is omega l. So, omega omega will be cancelled out in the both numerator and the denominator and the whole things become z c becomes root over l by c. This is happens when we consider transmission line to be lossless. Okay. So, this impedance is called also search impedance of the line. Okay. So, similarly uh, for the other parameter that uh, we uh, here you can see this A B C D parameters are function of both gamma and Z C. So, Z C for lossless line is coming out to be ratio of root over L by C, where L represents line inductance per unit length and C represent line to earth capacitance per unit length. Okay. Similarly, if you look at this the expression of gamma that we developed in uh, we consider in the last lecture, then if we for lossless line gamma will be equal to root over z multiplied by y. So, uh, z as I considered uh, is uh, equal to r plus j x and y as we consider is equal to j plus j b. So, if you look at this gamma, if we do not ignore this loss, then this gamma will have, uh, gamma is a basically complex quantity will have two uh, part, one is uh, real part, another is imaginary part. Okay. So, alpha is basically the real part of gamma and beta is basically imaginary part of part of gamma. So, when we consider R and G 0, then what will happen if we consider R and G 0, then uh, for lossless line, for lossless line, 
this alpha will become 0. So, gamma will become j beta. Okay. So, this you can see from the equation. So, uh, if we ignore the line losses uh, completely uh, assuming that there is no power loss happening to the to a transmission line, we can say that this gamma becomes equal to j beta. Now, this beta is having some significance. So, this beta is called phase sequent, phase constant. And this beta is responsible to have a phase shift of a long transmission line over this line. We will we'll study what is the effect of beta with a numerical example in, in due course. Okay. Now, when you uh, consider that uh, this, this assumption that uh, for lossless transmission line, these expressions A, B, C, D also will get change. In fact, this uh, you know this uh, these equations will remain same only the parameters a b c d will get changed so we can write for lossless line lines v s i s is equal to. Now, you can see this is suppose A B C D parameters and this is suppose receiving end parameters. Now, here we know that A is equal to cosine hyperbolic gamma L. Now, for lossless line for lossless line, we know that z c becomes root over L by c and gamma becomes j beta. So, gamma become purely imaginary quantity. So, you can see this one we developed in the last slide here. So, if you put this then what we will get that cosine hyperbolic gamma L will be equal to cosine hyperbolic j beta L. So, which is nothing but cos beta L. Similarly, sin hyperbolic gamma L will be equal to sin hyperbolic j beta L, which will be equal to which will be equal to j sin beta l. So, accordingly this a, b, c, d parameters will get change. right? So, we can write this uh, parameters a will be equal to cosine beta l, parameter b will be equal to j z c sin beta l parameter c will be equal to j sin beta l divided by z c and parameter d will be equal to parameter a that, that is cosine beta l. So, this equations will get changed as cos beta l j z c sin beta l j sin beta L divided by z c cos beta L. Okay. Now, this we get when we consider the line to be lossless. This is this will hold to be true when we consider the line to be lossless that is for lossless transmission line when we ignore the line losses. So, we will get two new set of equations from this one is V s is equal to V r cos beta L plus I r j z c sin beta L 
another is this is of course, I s So, I s is equal to I I s is equal to V r j sin beta l divided by z c plus I r cos beta l. Okay. So, do we get a uh, two new set of equations? These equations will hold when we consider when we consider line to be lossless. Now, you can also check whether this uh, you know two property that we discussed in the last uh, slide that A is equal to D and A B minus C D that is the determinant of this matrix is equal to 1 or not both the property will hold here as well. So, the symmetricity the symmetry and the reciprocity will hold for hold in lossless line as well. This we can comment you can you can see. So, uh, if we uh, put this a b minus c d this will be cos square, square beta l plus sin square beta l which is equal to 1. So, these equations will hold and this equation obviously is will hold a is equal to obviously d. So, both the equations will hold and we can comment that the symmetricity and reciprocity will hold for lossless line as well. Okay, and we get two set of equations. Now, here itself we have some more concepts for long transmission lines. One is called number one is called surge impedance and number two is surge impedance loading. Okay. In short it is called S i L. Okay. So, this we can uh, this we will study what is surge impedance, what is surge impedance loading and what is the significance of that, what is the significance of this surge impedance and surge impedance loading. This we will try to understand right now. Okay. So, surge imp what is surge impedance that is already discussed in the last slide when we have uh, this lossless transmission line it is it is uh, mathematically representing the root of the ratio of l by c okay and uh, what would be the unit of the surge impedance surprisingly if uh, although it is a ratio of, of root over l by c uh, it will be equal to ohm okay so this is a special property of a uh, typical transmission line that when it is uh, loaded uh, with this exactly with surge impedance, then that condition is called as surge impedance loading. And then important uh, property of surge impedance loading is that when a line is loaded with surge impedance, then the voltage at each and every point over the transmission line will remain same. Okay. So, this we can uh, you can easily prove over here. Okay. So, uh, when the line is of surge impedance uh, loaded, so in that case I r will be equal to V r divided by Z c. So, for surge impedance loaded line I r is equal to V r divided by Z c. It means that there is a uh, you know a uh, load impedance which is equivalent to surge impedance at the receiving end side of a transmission line. 
So, if we put this expression over this, then what we will get? We will get from this expression we get V s is equal to V r cos beta l plus I r we am replacing with this that is V r by Z c. So, this is this will be V r divided by Z c multiplied by J Z c sin beta l. Now, Z c Z c will cancel out. So, this will become equal to V s is equal to V r cos beta l plus J sin beta l. So, we can write this as a V r e to the power J beta l. Now, if you take the magnitude of this V s. So, this V s magnitude will be equal to V r. Okay. And this also you can prove for all other cases. So, for example, uh, if we consider and go back this original expression that we develop over here, this expression. Okay. So, this expression also we can develop in terms of uh, for a lossless line. So, let us see uh, for lossless line. transmission line the voltage at a point which is x distance away from the receiving end can be written as so if if you look uh, at this expression uh, this V x and I x is equal to cos hyperbolic gamma x and this. So, if we consider this expression for lossless line, what it would be? So, it would be V x I x is equal to cos beta x. So, since you, you can see over uh, in the last slide, so here simply I am just replacing that L by x. So, it will be cos beta x multi and this element will be J Z c sin beta x. So, this element will be J sin beta x divided by Z c and this element would be cos beta x. So, this will be V r r i r right. Now, from this also we can find out this V x this voltage expression as it is equal to V r cos beta x plus J or I should write I R first I R multiplied by J Z C sin beta x. Now, for for surge impedance loading in short S I L when there is a surge impedance loaded we know that V R is equal to I r Z c or that is I r is equal to V r divided by Z c. So, if I put it over here then what we get that V x is equal to 
भि आर कस बीटा एक्स प्लस भि आर डिवाइडेड बै जेड सी माल्टिप्लैड बे जेड सी सैन बीटा एक्स सो जेड सी जेड सी उल बी कैंसल्ड आउट सो दिस उल बिकम भि आर कस बीटा एक्स प्लस जे सैन बीटा एक्स सो उ कैन रिप्रेजेंट दिस एज ए भि आर इ टू दि पावर जे बीटा एक्स सो उ कैन से दैट दिस मैगनीट्यूट अफ दिस भि एक्स दैट इज दिस इज इक्ल टू भि आर एंड अलरेडी उ हाव प्रूव दैट दिस भि आर एंड भि एस are equal for search impedance loaded line then we can write this is equal to vs as well so this means that that line voltage at each and every point of the transmission line will be same and equal to sending and receiving and voltage when the line is loaded uh, with the search impedance this is a very special case okay and uh, if we plot this voltage profile that means so this happens for all x so if we plot this voltage profile uh, this vx versus this x so it will be a flat so this is also called flat voltage profile voltage profile for S I L. Okay, this is an important property uh, of a typical transmission line, and many times we will we will revisit this concept, search impedance loadings, uh, for various cases which we will be discussing in future. Okay, so this is something that one should know, and this is something a very special property of a transmission line that when the line is loaded with search impedance or for search impedance loading, we have a flat voltage profile. okay another important thing that we will develop over here that here if we go back and see that here all this derivation is based upon the concept that we develop we consider this x measured from the receiving end side that means uh, we we developed all this equation based upon the consideration that Uh, this x is measured from the receiving end now if suppose i tell that i have a transmission line long transmission line long transmission line whose single line diagram is somewhat representation is like that and the sending and side voltage is vs sending and side voltage is vs and receiving and side voltage is vr sending and current is let's say is receiving and current is ir everything is same but if we measure this distance x from the sending and side like this and if we try to find out the voltage at this point that is vx or the current flowing through this point that is ix then this vx ix uh, expression will not be obviously same what we developed in the other case we have developed the other case consideration with the consideration that x is measured from the receiving end side like this but if, if if this x is measured from the sending end side this expression will not be valid the, this expression will definitely be change okay now we will try to understand what would be the expression then and uh, we will also try to develop what would be the expression then so for this consideration when x is measured from the sending end side so here the difference is x is measured from the sending end side
so when we have so what would be the expression of v of x and i of x so that is what the question i want to put over here so there are two ways uh, to solve that the uh, first way is that can we just uh, develop uh, uh, some expression of this vx and ix where x is measured from the sending end side from the expression already we have or this is the first way or the second way is that we will follow the similar uh, you know uh, approach what we have developed in the last lecture that we will consider a small ele elementary length at a distance x from the sending end side and from that we will develop the expression of vx and ix this is the second approach ok. So, we will solve uh, this in both the approaches and we will see whether this will from the both the approaches the expression of vx and ix uh, will come out to be same or not ok. So, today what we can see is that we, we already develop a expression uh, which relates this sending and parameters with receiving and parameters that is this ok. So, from this expression you can see that left hand side we have sending hand side, receiving hand side we it, it is an right hand side. If we just interchange this left hand side to right hand side, if we bring it to the uh, right hand side and if we bring this column matrix to the left hand side, if we do uh, then uh, whether we will can find out the relationship of receiving and uh, voltage in terms of sending and voltage and then thereby we can find out a relationship of Vx and Ix. So, let us see how it can be done. So, let us write this first we know Vs Is is equal to A B C D V R I R. So, from this we can write V R I R if I put V R this column matrix to left hand side. So, this is equal to transpose of this mat uh, this inverse of this matrix inverse of this ABCD matrix multiplied by VSIS. This is mathematically you can write all right. So, this is mathematically you can write that VR IR is equal to the uh, inverse of this ABCD matrix multiplied with VSIS. Now, what is that inverse of this ABCD matrix? this you can do the determinant of this is already equal to 1 already we explained over here that a a m a b minus c d is equal to 1. Now, for lossless line uh, this determinant is equal to 1 and even if you consider losses uh, for that case also the determinant would be equal to 1. So, this for this matrix this inverse would be equal to if you do it then it will be a minus b minus c d. So, I write it here A minus B minus C D and you know that A and D are equal. So, this is equal to V R I R this is equal to V S I S. Now, we, we will put that we, we already know that uh, for lossless line, this is what the relationship that A is equal to cos beta L, B is, uh, D is also cos beta L. So, let us put this first. So, this is equal to cos beta L, cos beta L and B as we know for lossless line is equal to j z c sin beta l. So, let us put here j z c sin beta l and here j sin beta l divided by z c. 
remember this uh, expression what we put is valid for lossless line. So, this is applicable for lossless line ok for uh, when you consider losses. So, in, instead of cos beta l it will be cos hyperbolic gamma l that is that is what would be the change. Now, there would be negative since here we have negative in minus b and c. So, here there will be negative. So, from this we can get a relationship of v r and i r. So, what we will get this v r is equal to v s cos beta l minus j z c sin beta l multiplied by i s because already you know that we have a column matrix over here, we have a column matrix over here which is V s i s ok. So, from this we will get this expression ok. Similarly, we can write this i r is equal to minus j sin beta l divided by this is z c of course, z c multiplied by V s plus I s cos beta l. So, this we get from this expression. So, we this we get from this expression. Now, if can we just uh, relate this. So, this this equations gives a relationship of uh, receiving and parameters in terms of sending and parameters this relationship will gives. So, this relationship, so this shows relation of receiving end parameter, receiving end parameters in terms of sending and parameters ok. Now, so we get a relationship of receiving and parameters in terms of sending and parameters. Now, since uh, this V r and I r corresponds to x is equal to L because we consider this line length to be L, L meter or L kilometer. So, it gives a relationship of sending end and receiving end. That means, uh, when uh, x is equal to L for this particular uh, case, then we get this relationship. So, alternatively when uh, for x distance, so can we write that uh, this V x is will be equal to V s cos beta x minus j z c sin this will be beta l. So, sin beta x i s similarly i x will be equal to v s minus j sin beta x divided by z c plus cos beta x multiplied by i s. So, can we write this two from this or even or if you just uh, develop the expression of this v x and i x considering the x uh, measured from the sending end side whether we will be arriving at the same expression or not. So, these things we need to verify ok. So, these are basically correct and the verification will be uh, the correctness of this expression will be verified in the next lecture ok. So, only thing you have to understand that how we will develop this v x and i x where x is measured from the sending end side from this expression. So, here in this expression corresponds to x is equal to l. So, when x is equal to l your uh, v x will be equal to v r i x will be equal to i r. Now, if we put it this when x is equal to x that is x is measured from uh, sending end side. 
So, V x and I x expression we can derive from here and the correctness of this we can develop in the or, or you can verify in the next lecture. Okay. So, up to this today, thank you for your attention. Thank mm -hmm. you.